I'm here with another children's devotion for this week. We uh, look forward to meeting back for our in-person church services, our Sunday morning and Sunday night services uh, in particular, uh, starting May 17th. Uh, if you need a little bit more details of what that's going to look like, uh, I encourage you to go over to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel to watch the update video on what that is going to look like. There's going to be some changes, a lot of different things going on. We're still going to uh, incorporate social distancing into our services, but also want to make our corporate worship services available for as many people as possible. Just a quick note, we will not have Sunday school classes or our nursery. So both of those will not be happening uh, until some of the guidelines allow such, uh, such small group things and kind of close quarters things uh, allow those to come back. But we are moving to two different services at 9 o'clock and at 1045 starting on May 17th. And so we encourage you to bring your children, uh, kids, Grab your parents, tell them that you want to come back to church. And you know what? If, if, if you bring your kids or kids if you come and you make a little bit of noise, that's okay. That just means that you're there at church, parents, that you're bringing your kids to church and that you are investing in their spiritual growth. And if there's a little bit of noise or whatever, that's fine. We're going to just take that as a celebration that we have young children in our church because as they continue to grow in their relationship with Christ and grow also just naturally and physically that they will become the church uh, leaders of the next generation and and as they grow up in church then you're investing into their spiritual growth as well and their development as well so I wanted to encourage you with that before we got into our lesson uh, now I hope that, uh, that you have been watching some of our children's devotions, that you've been watching our, our Sunday school lessons, that you've been watching our pastor's daily devotions uh, on through Philippians and now starting with Psalms. And, and hopefully you're catching Proverbs on Wednesday nights in addition to our live streaming services because there's, there's quite a bit of a tendency to get swept up in everything that's going on. That, uh, that we just kind of miss our spiritual growth. You're busy, you have work, some of you are working from home, some, people, some of you aren't working, but you're trying to manage the education with the kids at home. So hopefully you're not getting swept up and uh, hopefully you can handle everything that's coming your way. And uh, yes, those were terrible broom puns, but uh, uh, I hope they didn't bristle you in the, in the wrong direction. Anyway, uh, what I want to do is provide a quick devotion using this broom as an object lesson. Okay, so what is the function of a broom? What do we use brooms for? Right, the, the main thing is sweeping, right? You can sweep things up and you sweep dirt off the floor. Uh, sometimes if you have cobwebs in your house or you need to get something off the ceiling, you can grab a broom and start brushing off the ceiling to get some of those cobwebs off. Maybe you've got a, a ceiling fan or sometimes just those pesky, th pesky things in the corners of your ceiling. Uh, maybe clean out some of your overhead vents in your air conditioning units. Uh, but this is, this is mainly for sweeping and gathering up dirt to be, uh, to be disposed of. Uh, you have outdoor brooms and indoor brooms, so something like this straw broom can be used either outdoor or indoor. These that are a little bit more of a, of a plastic and kind of a polyfibrous uh, bristles are more made for indoors, but uh, they can be used for outdoors if you need to. But I just wanted to uh, r help us to remember what these are for, and sweeping is work, right? And so how ridiculous would it be if we tried to sweep up everything in our kitchen or our floors using one of these bristles. And could you imagine that? Just taking one of these little broom bristles out and just trying to sweep up everything on the floor just by maybe, maybe grabbing it with both hands and just kind of dragging it along. Uh, how long would that take? How ridiculous would you look? Uh, I want you to try maybe just taking a piece of string, don't rip any bristles out of your broom, but uh, pay, take a piece of string or even a pencil or something and just try to sweep, start sweeping the floor. Yeah, how long would that take to sweep up an entire room? It would take forever, okay? So what do we do? We take a bunch of different bristles 
and we put them together, right? We, we take individual bristles and we all gather them in one place. And we have this cloth right here or thread to tie these bristles together to keep them in place. You've got a wire right here to attach it to the handle. Uh, some of the newer ones, some of the plastic ones, you've got, there's, these bristles are going into this plastic that holds them together. And it's not just one bristle in each little slot. There's several bristles and this whole plastic piece holds them together. So why am I talking about brooms and bristles and stuff? Well, the same way that you combine a lot of bristles on a broom to get work done is, is how we can apply that to our lives as believers. See, one person can make a difference, but when we come together, when we are unified with the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we are one with the Spirit, we become one with each other. See, we can accomplish great things by ourselves, but we can accomplish so much greater things if we're together working for the sake of the kingdom of God. And so just like each individual bristle has its function, we have our own functions too. That's why we've been missing church so much together because great things can happen when we combine ourselves with other believers for the sake of the kingdom of God. And being tied together, see these bristles are gathered together and then they're tied together with this thread, just like we are tied together with the Holy Spirit. Why? For the work of the ministry. That's what the whole purpose of church is. It's the equipping, it's the encouraging of one another and the equipping of the believers for the work of ministry. That's literally what the Bible says. It's a paraphrase, but that's why we have church so that we can get together and we can work. See, the Bible talks about being all together different, but coming together for the sake of the work of the kingdom of God, right? And so in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5, the Bible tells us that for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. See, we are all different people. We have different talents, different abilities, right? Some of you may be more able to teach, right, or, or th explain things really clearly. Some of you are really hard workers and get a lot of stuff done. Uh, it, it takes all kinds of people to come together to serve the church, to serve the kingdom of God. Uh, all of these bristles are in different places, right? And they're different lengths. So the ones here at the point are longer than the ones here at the back. That doesn't mean that these are more important. It just they work together to shape a curve so that when you sweep the floor, it's not just a straight edge coming down, that it's curved and allows to gather the dirt in to a different pile so that you can get swept up and disposed of, right? So that the work can be done, these gather together for one in one place for one common purpose. So just like that, just like the bristles of a broom, we gather together for one purpose. And that purpose is to do the work for the kingdom of God so we can serve other people, so we can share the gospel, so we can tell other people about Jesus and get stuff done. So uh, I want you to think about what you can do to help other people. Maybe your family is blessed during this time and you can help meet the needs of other people. Maybe you can gather up some supplies and go drop it off to somebody that's in need. Maybe there are some older people in, uh, in your church congregations that you, uh, that you know kind of maybe aren't doing so well. Maybe just check up on them. Maybe just give them a call. Let them know that you're thinking about them, praying, about, pr praying for them, uh, praying about uh, you know, when we get to come back to church because as we come back, some of those people that are at, at high risk uh, demographics, they, they may need to stay home for a little while longer and that they don't get to, to come to church as quickly as others, so they need some more encouragement. So what can we do to serve, to work together as believers to, uh, to do the work of the kingdom of God? So I hope that encourages you. I hope it challenges you to think about what you can do to serve other people. And in the meantime, like I said, this broom is for sweeping, so maybe grab a broom and start sweeping up your kitchen, I'm sure parents would appreciate it. So thanks, have a very blessed day, and I hope to see you again real soon.